everyone. This is Stephanie. Welcome to The Secret Place. I'm glad you've come back, or if it's your first time, so glad you're here. Today I'm reading a short passage from A Testament of Devotion, Thomas Kelly. Once again, this is page 67, and we're talking about what it means to experience the divine presence. Is it possible? Can we experience God's presence here and now on this, on this planet today? Or uh, is it just for monks, just for nuns? Uh, we're just for the people who have passed on. Let's, let's, uh, let's read first. The possibility of this experience of divine presence as a repeatedly realized and present fact and its transforming and transfiguring effect upon all of life, this is the central message of the Friends. Once discover this glorious secret, this new dimension of life, and we no longer live merely in time, but we live also in the eternal, the world of time is no longer the sole reality of which we are aware. A second reality hovers, quickens, quivers, stirs, energizes us, breaks in upon us, and in love embraces us together with all things within himself. We live our lives at two levels simultaneously, the level of time and the level of timeless. They form one sequence with a fluctuating border between them. Sometimes the glorious eternal is in the ascendancy, but still we are aware of our daily temporal routine. Sometimes the clouds settle low and we are chiefly in the world of time, yet are haunted by a smaller sense of the presence of the Lord in the margin of our consciousness. Whew, I probably should read that twice because it, it sounds a little heavy, but really what Kelly is saying is that yes, yes, we can experience God's presence here on earth in time and in space, one day we will experience it in, you know, outside of time and space in the Eternals. But he is, he is suggesting that the Eternals begin now and that God created us with a capacity to know and understand him. And very often, what does that mean to us in terms of um, hearing from God or um, or, or feeling his presence, knowing his presence deeply. Um, I like what he said at the end there. He said it happens essentially um, in, the, in the margin of our consciousness, um, in the margin of consciousness. Think about that. You know, what is the margin of consciousness? I guess one, one example I could give you is just as you're falling asleep, just before you sleep, have you ever like woken up and had a, like a false start to sleep, like you're just in between, or you're just waking up and you're and you're in a dream, but you're kind of coming out of that dream and you're just at the margin of your consciousness. And I think that that's what happens with um, with the Lord and His presence. Uh, very often, I mean, God can speak to us and show up and reveal Himself any way He wants, and He has throughout history, but. As I'm talking about my own experience, and I think Thomas Kelly is, is talking about the same kind of experience, is that we may hear a voice that sounds like our own voice, but it's not really an inner dialogue. It's not something that we are thinking about consciously. Um, it's at the very edge or the very margin of our consciousness. These things are are challenging to talk about because we are material beings, we are physical beings living in the here and now, but there is a there and then, there is a, a, a yonder, a by and by, as they say, that um, we're not familiar with, we're not familiar with. But, but if eternity really does start now and we're living in this kind of timeless way that will continue beyond our own death, uh, then we've got to kind of make room in our understanding for this timeless entry and presence of God in our life. How do you, how does one experience this? Well, I certainly am not an expert on it, but I will say that the more we speak to the Lord um, in all of his invisibility, you know, the more we seek the Lord, the more we come before him, the more we include him in our daily doings, um, instead of like praying in the morning, getting on our knees and praying for five minutes and then waiting till the next day to do it again, kind of moving along throughout the day. Hello, Lord. Good morning. 
hello, my Lord. Hello, Father. What do you have for me to do today? Getting in the car. Thank you for my car and thank you for the, the drive to work. Thank you for where I'm going, who I'm going to meet. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in my life. Like speaking to him, um, not as if he's there, but that he is there. And I think the more that we do that, the more we can experience this divine presence that really is transformative. That's where Kelly went with this, is that that presence of God is that which we need. It's, the, it's what gives us joy and brings us joy because we were made for it. We were made to experience his presence. We were made to know him. So often, and for so many, and for most of us, most all of us, we experience that stark difference between um, life and death, right? All of us do that. We all, we all are born and we're all going to die. But we experience uh, the thinking about that very much like night and day, black and white, light and dark. Um, and there's just these, this kind of bifurcated way of thinking about it. But if we see ourselves in our inner eye, in our inner vision, if we perceive ourselves as in a place of timelessness with the Lord. Um, I, I do think sometimes the inklings of eternity, the kind of joy we can experience and we will experience there and then can be experienced here and now, if even in small measure. And um, so much of what I've read in the past does say and does suggest that many others throughout history have experienced those inklings of eternity, um, those snatches of joy, true joy, um, true apprehension of truth, of God's beauty. And it, it um, I, I can't even say it adds something to life. It becomes the very like, part of our being, of our beingness. So I'm going to stop there because really where we could go with this needs like an hour of discussion. And um, these little videos in the secret place are meant to be just five, 10 minutes tops, just to get us thinking about things eternal and, um, and the way we communicate about them. So please leave your comments and your thoughts. I'd love to hear what you have to say about this. Um, maybe you can untangle some of what I just said in probably quite a tangled way. In any case, I'm so glad you've come. I'm so glad you're here and I hope to see you again soon. Have a blessed day, a blessed and beautiful day. This is Stephanie in The Secret Place. Bye now.